All right. Hi, I'm Aaron Heiser, Makers Leather Supply. Um, we just finished the, uh, we just posted the other video on making a roper style wallet using our acrylic templates and it blew up the internet temporarily. So I was going to wait until after the weekend, but I'm going to have to do it now. But anyway, we now have our billfold style wallet uh, template um, pack available as well. Uh, so we're going to do another video and I'm going to show you how to um, how to build that. Um, it's uh, it's a smaller wallet, but it's actually a little bit more difficult to build. Uh, there's more steps to it. I wouldn't call it difficult. Um, there's, there's no reason that anybody that can make the other wallet couldn't make this one too. Um, but anyway, uh, this one is... It's not as popular of a style of wallet uh, as, as the Roper with uh, a lot of my customers. Um, just because a lot of my customers are, they just, they like the Roper wallet. Me personally, this is the wallet I carry every day. I, I absolutely love it. Um, mine's actually a rough out. Uh, there it is right there. And um, there's what the inside looks like. This one was just made very hastily. I was making it showing a demo on how to do card pockets and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's just a, a, a real hastily made rough out wallet is all it is. Um, and yeah. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll start making this one. This one has three pieces in it, but you're actually going to end up cutting out four. Um, the wallet back is going to be four to five ounce uh, leather, just like the Roper wallet. Um, this is the divider, uh, which is it, it kind of lines the, uh, the wallet back. And then it's also what your credit card pockets are sewn to. And then here's your credit card pockets. You've got, you're going to have a right and a left. So if you look at the instructions, it says cut, put, uh, Card pa pocket pattern, cut one from side A and one from side B. And right here it says side A, and then backwards it says side B. So if you turn it over, you can see that um, after you pull the paper off, the protective paper off the back. Um, and then just like the other one, we've got uh, this clear window here that we will not cut out. It says do not cut out. And we'll draw our lines uh, for our tape lines uh, using it. So that being said, we're going to get to it. Um, yeah, I actually, I forgot one thing, so I'm going to pause the video here and gra gather a couple more supplies and be right back with you. All right, sorry about that brief pause, but the good news is you didn't even notice. So, I'm um, going to tilt the camera down a little bit here so we can see my work area a little bit better. Um, basically the same tools as the Roper style wallet. We've got a couple of edgers here for when we, we get finished and start doing the edge. We have an overstitch wheel. We have um, an awl and uh, we have a stitch groover, a pair of scissors, some double-sided sticky tape right here on this, this uh, it's on my stitching pony, but that's what I use as a tape dispenser. This one's going to be hand sewn. So that's some uh, 0.8 millimeter tiger thread. Um, this wallet was also designed to be, or this template was also designed to be used with a scalpel. And uh, so we have a scalpel with a, a fresh blade. I threw a brand new blade in it so that we could get an uh, extra sharp cut here. And so, yeah, that's it. Um, we're going to start with the uh, billfold back. Okay. And what I have here, this is just some four to five ounce um, French calf leather is all it is. Um, it's not Horween like the other the other wallet was. Um, it can be anything. It can be um, you know anything with some good rigidity that's going to make a nice uh, billfold back. Uh, most of them are going to be veg tan because well, I do a lot of tooling and stuff like that. I normally don't make plain wallets, but for the simplicity of the video, that's what we've done. So you put your template down. You take your scalpel and you just cut the perimeter out. You hold your uh, have to hold your template very still. And make sure it doesn't move on you. So I do a lot of switching hands and stuff like that. I'm very fortunate in the fact that I can cut with my left hand almost as good as I can with my right. So that does help some. So there it is. That piece is going to be our billfold back. And uh, yeah, that's the only piece I'm going to cut out of that French calf. I wanted this one. I wanted the interior to be a little bit different. So this is some Italian leather that I've had, had for a little while. Very, very good leather for wallet interiors. I've made a lot of wallets out of this stuff. Unfortunately, the resource for it was Tandy back in the day, and they don't carry this leather anymore. 
And that really stinks because when I'm out, I'm out. I don't know where to get anymore. I only make my really best wallets out of it because of that fact. I, I you know, I don't want to run, ever run out. That being said, when I knew they were going to sell out of it, I, um, I bought as much as I could afford at the time, which wasn't a lot, but it was enough to last me for the next couple of years of wallets. So um, this is the divider piece. We're going to cut it out of this, uh, out of the lining leather. So here we go. All right, so there it is. I think it cut all the way through. I guess it did. Nice fresh blade helps out a lot. So um, this is going to be the uh, the card pocket piece. Again, we're going to cut two of these. Um, I'll cut out the perimeters of both of them first, and then I will get my cutting my punching surface up here, and I'll I'll punch the holes and cut the slots after I have the uh, the perimeters of them cut out. So. Give me just a second here. Seriously. All right. There's one. And we'll cut out one more. I absolutely hate to ever have waste with this leather because like I said, it's it's very limited to me and I, I can't get it anymore until I can find a resource for it again. Um, it's amazing leather though, I love this stuff. I need to take it to some of my leather resources and ask them to find it for me. cool thing is it came in this color, it came in like a darker brown, and then it came in like a red, but I don't know, it, it was either a super deep pink or a, a red, I can't even figure out what to call the color, it was just the coolest color, and uh, it makes some really cool wallet interiors, especially if I'm doing skulls and stuff like that, it just, it made a really neat interior, so, this over here, scraps there. Um, one thing I will show you, uh, I try to do this to each of these templates as I make them um, and clean out that little slot right there. That's actually two passes with the laser to get just the right size for the, uh, the scalpel to go through. Well, my problem is if I don't think to clean it out, then there might be just a tiny bit of residue in there. And um, so I'm going to clean it out here. And so yeah, I just stick my scalpel in there and run it back and forth a little bit and it'll kind of rid of that residue. So I do. I try to do this to every wallet that we, or every uh, pattern, the template that we produce, but maybe I missed one. Maybe I wasn't the one that pulled it off the laser and Janie forgot too. I don't know. But I do know that there might be some that that doesn't happen. So that's why that would be less than smooth in there. Okay. We're going to punch our holes and, um, and cut our lines. All right, so we're going to line this up just as picture perfect as we can here. And we're going to punch our holes. Where's my ball? Okay. Then we will cut. Again, just like I explained in the other video, the reason that we punch holes at the ends of these is if your customer or whoever ends up with this wallet stuffs a whole bunch of cards in each pocket, which does happen, um, a lot of people like to carry a lot of stuff around, um, then that will make it to where the, the wallet um, 
pockets, the credit card pockets will not um, rip. So that's that's what those little punches are for. Okay, we're gonna set this one aside. And again, we've got to flip this over to side B because these are on the opposite side, okay? Because there's a left and a right in this wallet. So um, this one I did not take the tape off of because it will be put back on the shelf since it is a brand new one. I have my own copy here, but it's not the finished product. I didn't, um, I hadn't finalized everything when I made the, the very first one because it was just a prototype. And uh, when I figured that out, I swiftly fixed the, the issues with it, started printing more of them, and yeah. But anyway, you can tape this tape off the back of them, and then you can see through them, and that will uh, that will really help, especially if you've got leather that you're working with that you're trying to work around some imperfections or anything like that. So somebody had already asked me, why are they blue? And, um, you know, Maker's Leather Supply was uh, started with just blue guns. That's that's all we were selling was blue guns and pattern packs, things like that for holster makers. And uh, so I've always kind of felt like blue was just Maker's Leather Supply's color. So when I ordered acrylic to start making templates, that's why I ordered all blue. And that is why I will continue to order all blue. So there we have another cutout one. Again, there's a right and a left. So they're opposites, okay? Okay, so much like in the Roper uh, template pattern, I have to find my pen. There it is. Sorry, Tanner was on here drawing a while ago, so I'm lucky to have found my pen at all. All right, so I'm going to take, and I'm going to take this rectangle, and I'm going to put the top part of it at one of those cut lines, but I'm going to do it off to the side just a tiny bit so that I can mark that cut line. And I'm gonna mark with a pen across the bottom of it, just like that. So right up here, the top of that is lined up with a cut line. And then I drew a line down here for my tape. And there is a mall in your way. I apologize, I should be paying attention. Um, so cut line up here, drawn line down here. And then we're gonna move up to the next cut line. You separate these, it's such a fine line, it's hard to differentiate them some. There we go. And I'm going to draw another line. And then I'll do my third one here. Top of it at the cut line, bottom of it marked. All right, and again, there's a reason that I kind of offset those just a little bit and didn't make them directly under these lines. Um, and you'll you'll see that reason here in a few minutes when we start running our, uh, our Tyvek or our ribbon to, to put it together. Okay. Top of it up against the cut line, bottom of it. Marked with a pen. Um, I'm, I'm hoping you saw it on the video, but then I'm marking on the back of these, okay? I'm not marking on the front of them where you would see these pen marks. I'm marking on the back, the flesh side of the leather. So there it is. That's what both of them are going to look like. Now, um... Again, we're going to be using Tyvek um, for the uh, the card pockets on these. Um, this is some very hard to find, not very cheap black Tyvek that um, I have a limited supply of, but I use it on my really nice wallets. Normally, I just use the white Tyvek. It's very easy to get a hold of on um, Amazon is where I usually get it. But sometimes you can find it at construction sites and stuff like that. They'll give you a roll. I mean, it, it's it's cheap. It's uh, it's disposable to construction crews. They use it to wrap houses and stuff like that um, when they're when they're making them. Hmm. Sorry about that. I needed some coffee. All right. So, um, 
for this wallet pattern, we're going to need seven pieces of double-sided tape for each side. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video so that you don't have to sit here and watch me cut those out because I didn't pre-cut them before the video started. So, be right back with you in just a few minutes. All right, folks, so I have taken and cut seven pieces of double-sided tape, roughly the length of these uh, card slots, okay? We're gonna go ahead and pre-position most of the pieces of tape. All right, and you're gonna take one piece of tape and put it above all of the cut slots between the top cut slot and the top of the wallet there. That'll be our ending point when we're done. Then you'll put one just below each of your cut slots, just below. Do not get them into the cut slots. Just put them right below. All right, and then we will take one final piece to pre-position, and we're going to put it just above the bottom drawn line. So when it's done, it'll look like that. Again, these are cut slots at the top, and the tape goes just below each cups, cut slot, one just above the bottom drawn line, and then one up here at the very top, above the top cut, cut slot. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So there's one above the top cut, cut and then one just below each cut. and then one just above that bottom drawn line. Okay? All right, now, with this one, you will need 13 inches of Tyvek, at least, okay? You may want to cut it 14 inches just to give yourself some leeway to mess up, um, but 13 inches of Tyvek for each side, okay? The width of this Tyvek is roughly the same width as those uh, card slots, all right? So, if you watch the Roper Wallet, you're vaguely familiar with what we're about to do here, but we're gonna remove the tape from the very bottom cut line. All right, or well, not the tape, but the, the protective paper over the tape. And we're gonna lay this Tyvek up there so that it is very, very straight and perpendicular to the wallet. And we're gonna lay it across that tape. All right, then we're gonna pull it down here and we're gonna create a crease right there at that wallet, at that um, pocket cut, that uh, cut slot. Once we've done that crease, we're going to remove the protective tape or the pro tape protective paper <laughs> from, the, uh, from that very bottom piece there. And we're gonna pull it kind of tight, but not so tight that it's wrinkling the wallet. You just wanna make sure that it's nice and flat right here. And you're gonna lay it across that tape and rub it in real good, okay? Then you fold it back up, all right? You're gonna fold it back up. You're gonna create a crease right even with that bottom line, okay? Then take that next piece of tape off of, from the middle um, cut, and you're gonna lay it right across there. Once again, making sure that it's nice and flat, no wrinkles, no folds, no nothing like that in it, okay? From there, you'll bring it back down and you'll create another crease just at the um, the fold, the the the, the uh, cut slot there. Okay. Now here's where another piece of tape comes in, and also where having that line offset just a little bit to where you can see it there comes in all in handy. Okay. If we had drawn that line directly under the Tyvek, then we wouldn't be able to see it now. So we're going to take this piece of tape and we're going to put it on the back of that first layer of Tyvek, just above that line, okay? So there it is. Okay, we've already created a crease here, so the next thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and take our protective tape uh, covering back off of here. There it is. All right, we'll lay it across there, get it nice and flat, Beautiful. 
Got a little bit of sticky residue there. Okay, from there, we're once again, we're gonna crease it going up, back up to the uh, card pockets. We're gonna crease it just even with that drawn line down there. Okay. And then we'll take the uh, protective, uh, the tape protector off the, the top layer there. And we'll go ahead and lay it up there. Okay. Now, we've got one piece of tape left over here, and we're going to put it just above that top drawn line. Just like that. Okay, we'll pull this... Uh, Pull this uh, Tyvek down so that we have a good crease again. I always crease it before I remove that covering off there because you don't want to accidentally put it in the wrong place. So I always crease it first and then I take that little protective piece off there and I go ahead and stick it. All right, when we're done with that, we're going to fold it back up here to the top. We're going to crease it again, and then we're going to remove that top piece of tape right there. So there it is. Okay, after that, we're going to take our scissors and give that a little cut right along there. And there it is. There's one. I'm going to pause the video while I do the other one the exact same way. And then uh, when I come back, we'll have both of them ready. All right, folks, sorry about another pause, but here we are. We now have both sides of this put together, ready to go. So the next thing we're going to do is fold these in half. Okay, we're just going to line up the edges, fold them right in half, create a little bit of a crease right here. Okay, if you're using veg tan, you can't even get that part just a little bit wet, just barely moisten it with a, a spray bottle or a damp towel or something. And it'll help you to secure that fold right there. Okay. Do the exact same thing on the other side there. We're gonna bend it over and fold. And so now we have a left and a right. All right. So next is um, where I'm going to take some of that double sided tape, and I'm actually going to tape along these three sides here of this fold um, because I'm going to sew that folded line right there, just like we did in the Roper wallet. I'm going to sew right down that. Um, again, I'm, I'm going to hand sew it just like I did the other one, just so that you can see, you know, that this wallet can easily be made hand sewing just as well as it can on a machine. Um, so if you don't have a machine, don't be afraid of this project. It's, 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 it's a great one. It's real easy to sew. So there you go. Um, so yeah, I'm going to cut me some double-sided tape here and um, get ready to fold these over permanently. You do want to make sure that you don't put your double-sided tape in so far that you will get into the, um, the Tyvek. Um, because you will affect, you will be able to affect um, the uh, cards going in and out if you do that. And you don't want to do that. I love this double-sided tape. After I made the video with the uh, the Roper wallet, someone actually messaged me and asked if. You could use double-sided tape for this instead of glue. And, um, yep, here's the answer. The answer is yes, you can. Um, it is quicker. It is easier, I guess. Um, I just, I really like glue. But I thought just to prove the point, I would go ahead and do it on this video. Plus, this one's a little bit more delicate because the cards are on both sides. The other side, the other wallet, we glued down, you know, practically half the wallet. Um, because it, we didn't have to worry about card pockets on the other side of it. So there's one nice and glued down or stuck down, and now we will do the other.
All right. I always take all the, the uh, protective ta uh, paper off of these first, or last, I'm sorry, so I don't accidentally get my hand stuck to it, because, well, it happens. Okay, again, I'm going to line up my corners, stick it all down. Now these two are ready to sew. Now all I'm going to sew is down this fold line right here on each of them, okay? Um, I'm going to take, take my stitch groover and very gently run it down both, and then I'll take my overstitch wheel and do the same. Slow and gentle on this one. Actually, I may not even bother on the other one because I'm not even barely scratching the surface. Um, since that's, you know, such a hard one to hold down, I, uh, yeah. All right, so I'm going to take my overstitch wheel, and I'm going to go ahead and mark my stitching holes here. And then I'll do the same on this other one here. All right, uh, again, I'm going to pause the video, and when I come back, we will be, um, these two lines will have been sewn. Um, I'm using, again, I'm using uh, 0.6 millimeter uh, tiger thread, correction, 0.8 millimeter tiger thread. This is the beige color. Not necessarily because the beige goes with the inside well, but the beige is really going to look good against the outside piece of this wallet. So I'll unpause it when we're done sewing these two lines. All right, so while the video is paused, I went ahead and sewed both of those lines down. Okay, so now we have a really nice fold right there, real nice and tight, and um, that's going to create a really nice pocket inside this wallet. <clears throat> All right, so the next thing we have to do is both of these pieces are going to connect to this liner piece here. All right, but due to how this wallet is constructed, we're only going to sew the very tops of them, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to stick down the very top edge of each of these um, to this liner, the wallet liner piece here. Um, we'll just do it with some double-sided sticky tape, and then I'm going to go ahead and I will sew across this line right here. And, um, yeah, that's what we're going to do next. And then we can begin our final construction of putting the, the wallet back um, onto the rest of it. So again, um, well, I'll go ahead and do this for the camera here. So there's one. And actually, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and double-sided tape three sides of this thing so that it's getting stuck for when we go to sew around the rest of the wallet here in a little bit. Now again, I'm not doing the folded side. I didn't put tape there. I only did it on the other three sides because that's going to be a pocket once this wallet's complete. Okay. So there's one. Now we'll stick the other one. And again, I prefer to use um, contact cement for this, but like I said, we had a, one of our friends on Facebook was asking if you could use tape, and so I wanted to prove to him that yes, you definitely can and make just as nice of a wallet. I just really like playing with glue.
All right, so there's that. Uh, again, I'm going to run my overstitch wheel across the top of these. Okay, and, um, and I'll go ahead and stitch groove them too because that's going to be a little bit better of a hold up than the, uh, the other line I was trying to groove while ago. A nice deep groove there. And you can either sew each of them individually or you can do one continuous line. I'm going to do the continuous line um, because I like that extra little stitch right there off the edge of the pocket, um, kind of holding that real nice and secure. And uh, it also shows that this thing was not sewn on a machine um, when you do that. So if I were machine sewing it, though, I would. I would just do the two individual pockets, and that would be that. All right, so again, those uh, those holes are marked now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off for a few minutes while I uh, poke all these holes with my awl. And then uh, when I come back, this will be sewn together. All right, folks. So while the video was paused, I went ahead and sewed, let me say, orient it right so I can say it's the top. But I went ahead and sewed that top line right there. So now these pockets are part of this liner piece. Um, and then uh, also off camera, I just sanded that top part there because we're about to burnish it and I want it to look nice and clean and even. Um, one of the other things we're about to do is we're going to start prepping the back so that it's ready to be stitched onto the rest of the wallet. And uh, earlier in the video, I said something about this was a little bit more complicated of a design. It's just, it's got more steps to it. It's, there's nothing hard about it if you follow the steps. Um, but that being said, uh, I've got to get my cutting board up here and we're going to punch a half of a circle through the bottom part of this. Okay. The reason you do that is when you, when you have a wallet like this, let me pull mine, oops, it's already out. When you pull it out, let's say the, the, the owner of this wallet gets home at the end of the day, pulls it out of his pocket and he throws it down on the table. If we don't do what we're about to do, then when he does that, it's going to flop open, okay? These wallets have to have a natural fold in them or else they'll flop open, unlike the Roper wallet, which doesn't need such a thing. Um, just because if you sew this wallet flat together, then it's all going to bunch up when you try to fold it over. And then again, it'll never train itself to... to, to, uh, to have its natural shape that it ought to have. Um, a lot of folks have problems when they're trying to design their own wallets. They don't include that because they just don't know. Um, and I'll, I'm not going to lie. I probably made quite a few wallets before I figured it out as well. So anyway, so what we need to do is we need to take, uh, this is a number 35 uh, Osborne Punch. Um, I don't really know the size, but what, a, what you're looking for is it fits perfectly between these two pockets. That's all I'm looking for. So it doesn't matter what size it is, as long as it fits right there. And again, I'm not cutting the full circle out. I'm just cutting like the half moon out, okay? So there you go. So we're gonna take our mole, give that a little tap, and there. Now we have that little notch right there that we can put around the, uh, we can sew around it and so that this wallet will naturally stay closed um, when it's just laying there by itself. Very important part of this. Uh, that, that will make or break a high quality wallet right there. Um, and again, we'll, we'll explain more of that while we're sewing the wallet together. What we need to do though, is we need to worry about these tops. Okay, this top right here and then the top of our wallet back, both of those areas need to be um, burnished before we sew the wallet together because you'll get a better at burnish when you do. All right, so I'm gonna use a number three edge beveler on this. I'm gonna take that corner off right there. I want that well rounded, because it looks nice. All right. 
Same on the back. Very careful not to take my edge beveler into that little gout, that little gap between the pockets there because it'll create one heck of a gouge and uh, yeah, it's pretty unforgiving. It'll be unsightly for the, uh, the lifetime of this wallet if that happened. Okay, so I'm gonna do that and now I'm gonna use a Montana edger since this is only a piece of four ounce here. I'm gonna use a little Montana edger number three, which is, it's, it's kind of like the regular Ron's edgers, but they're made for thinner leathers. Um, the bigger, the biggest thing is Look at how wide the toes are on this edger and how narrow this one is. So what it allows you to do is get closer to your work surface um, and still touch the edge of the leather. Now I'm just barely taking a little bit of it off. I mean, barely at all. You can't, you know, that's not much leather, but it's just enough to kind of take the edge off there. Um, you can see the measurement uh, of this piece of leather is actually written on the inside of it. I don't really worry about, um, you know, cutting one of those out unless it's just going to be a prominent part of, you know, something. Um, and in this one's case, it's going to be on the inside of the of the wallet where the cash goes, so it, it doesn't really matter. I, uh, I think it's a neat little accessory anyway. So um, here I have Angelus uh, dark brown dye. I've got a little dauber here that I keep connected to it. I'm just gonna dye those edges that I'm about to burnish. And then I'll burnish them down and then we will continue on with construction. Just barely gonna touch that. Just like that. Beautiful. Same over here, only on the top, because the rest of it's all going to get burnished together after it's sewn together. But this one needs it before it's sewn together, or else you can't reach everything that you need to reach. All right. Ooh, skip some back here, didn't I? So there we are. Set that over there so it's not going to get my cutting mat with the wet dye there. Close that cap before I spill it because that's what I do. All right, now we're going to bust out the Ron's edger up here. Um, people keep asking me about this applicator for Ron's edger. It is an awesome, awesome thing. However, um, I have a really hard time keeping them in stock. And even Merle from Ron's has told me that if I can find a better resource for them, he would love to know. Because one, they're kind of expensive, and two, he also can't get way too many of them. So we're going to take our Ron's edge rub, and I'm just going to put it on that one corner that we're going to burnish right quick. Take a piece of light canvas here, give it a rub. Okay, now that edge is nice and slick and smooth. Looks pretty. We'll do the same thing over here. This uh, Italian leather here, that's one of the reasons I love it is because it actually you can get a decent burnish on it. It's not great, it's not near as good as veg tan, but it's uh, it, it's pretty decent. You can at least make it nice and smooth and uh, make the pieces come together really well. That phrase in my canvas here, let's get rid of those. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside for just a second because we need to concentrate on our wallet back. And what we need to do is um, we need to round these corners just a tiny, tiny bit. And then we need to do our, uh, our, our we need to go ahead and do our stitch groover and our, um, 
our overstitch wheel around the entire wallet back because it's going to be hard to do once we start sewing it to the wallet. Now unlike the Roper style, this wallet has to be sewn in pieces. Um, you can't just go all the way around the outside because it won't line up right. Um, I'm sure if I made a million more of them, I could figure out a way to predict how it's going to be and, and get it all to line up like it ought to, but I've only made a couple of thousand of them, so I can't do that. And a couple of thousand is an exaggeration as well. So anyway, um, so we need to use our stitch groover and go around the edge here. And then we need to use our overstitch wheel and do the same. And go nice and slow because the stitch groover is a very unforgiving tool. Mess up with it and you have messed up. And as people like to tell me all the time, you done messed up, A.A. Ron. You know, it's funny about that video uh, that I just referred to with the whole you messed up A.A. Ron. You know, that video came out while I was in the Army, and um, I had a decent amount of rank. I was a sergeant first class. So, you know, that commanded a pretty good level of respect from soldiers. Well, that video came out, and all of a sudden my soldiers quit calling me Sergeant First Class Heiser, and they started calling me A.A. Ron. So a lot of soldiers got to do some extracurricular activities when that happened. But they still love to do it, so that's fine. If they want to do push-ups, that's okay. All right, there in the background, you can hear the local 1%er motorcycle club moving out. Go Colleen, Texas. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and overstitch wheel around the entire perimeter here because, again, once I start sewing this thing together, it's going to be a lot harder to do this. So might as well do it now. Almost there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the top part of this, um, the wallet back, just with the wallet back. And then I'll start actually adding other pieces and doing some construction. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and I'm going to sew just that top line, and then I'll come back and show you construction. All right. So during the pause, I sewed that top line right there, okay, because it's the top of the wallet. When we sew the wallet, once we put the insides in, you won't be able to sew that very well because it's going to be hard to poke the holes. Um, I did want to sh share with you something real quick. Uh, there's an alternate way to make this wallet that's much simpler than what we're doing right now. And that is just to sew the two sides of the, the pockets in. Okay, now while that's a much faster method and it does work well, and I mean, I've had this wallet for at least a year and it's, it's doing great, um, it's just not as, as finished looking and professional looking as the one we're about to do. The stitch will go all the way around on the outside and it'll just be a prettier finished product. Um, if you don't have time or you're using a sewing machine, this is the way to go right here. But if you do have the time and especially if you're hand sewing, you might as well just go that extra little mile and, um, and have a really nice finished product because that's how you can command a higher price for it if that's what you're going for. So I left my uh, my threads on here and I left them pretty long because they're going to continue on and uh, continue sewing all the way around this wallet. All right. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of this double-sided tape 
and I'm only going to put it right here and right here. Okay, only on one half of this wallet. I'm only going to do two sides. All right, there's a method to the madness. You do that first, and then once you get to that gap right there, you're going to go ahead and, uh, and, and poke your holes through your, your outside, your uh, wallet back, and sew the wallet back through that gap area, and then you'll connect the other side of the wallet. So, I know that sounded confusing, and you're like, Aaron, what in the hell are you talking about? It's going to make sense, okay? So, I'm doing my double-sided tape here. Again, I usually would use glue, but tape works too. All right, and I'm going to take and just carefully place this corner down. Get it all nice and lined up and stick it. Okay, so right now I am going to poke my holes with my awl and I'm going to go all the way around. Let me turn this so you can see the bottom side of it here. I'm going to go all the way from here down to right there, punching my holes. And then I'm going to stop and I'm going to bring the camera back. Okay, so right now I'm going, while I've got the camera paused, I'm going to poke all my holes and sew to that point right there. So once again, here's another pause. We'll be right back. All right, so here we are. As promised, we sewed around two sides, right there and there, and then we stopped when we got to that gap in the center, okay? Um, the reason that we've done that is we, from here, we will actually glue or tape this side of the wallet, um, the liner and the, the uh, excuse me, the wallet back, we will glue those together right there, or tape, and then glue and tape this right here all the way down, and then you'll have this bubble right here, okay? And that bubble is the reason that this thing naturally closes, okay? So again, very, very important because here it is. You can see when it's closed, those almost line up right there as far as the back and the, uh, the, the interior of the wallet. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to lay naturally like it should, okay? So, but first thing we need to do before we glue all that is we need to uh, estimate how many holes across this backside that we need to sew before we get back to it. So it's one, two, three, four. Four holes, ha, ha, ha. Sorry, couldn't help myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch those four holes right quick and uh, sew them, and then we'll stick that other side to it. Orient this how I'm used to it, I'm sorry. Okay. Now, do a little bit of saddle stitching here. Not quite enough to have to pause the video, but we're gonna do these four holes. Um, my holes are pretty tight because I like using the smallest awl blade that I can get away with. Um, I, I like small holes because I don't want a gigantic, um, you know, gap right there when it's supposed to be a finely hand-sewn wallet. That's what always bothered me about some of the Leathercraft kits that had the pre-punched holes in them is those holes are just massive. And uh, so it's really hard to... Uh, to make those look good because the sewing is just going to be sloppy because the holes are so big. It's not the person that's doing its fault, you know, but then they have to wonder when they're done with the kit, like, why does it look so sloppy? Well, there you go. Gigantic holes. Okay. 
All right, now I have sewn across that gap there. So now I am ready to go ahead and stick this side down. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some double-sided sticky tape right there and right there. Okay, I'll remove the backing from them. All right, so you want to line up the end of your back with the end of your, your card pockets and liner here, but you also want to make sure that the bottom part here is also lined up. Okay, the top part is not going to line up because the, the, the wallet back is a little bit larger than the wallet insides. That is by design. When you're standing there at a register and you're trying to put some money in your wallet, it's much easier to do if you can just slide it in there because that, ga that, uh, that space is a little bit larger there. All right, so I've got this properly stuck. Now I'll show you a little trick here. When you go to punch or poke your holes with your awl, do it with half of it hanging off your bench. And now that's a nice flat surface that I can go ahead and punch uh, my holes. So I'm gonna punch holes all the way around to the end of the wallet. Oh, let me pause this pizza again. How's it going? Good. Janie!
There's your water. Santa, come eat. All right, folks, so when the pizza got here, I uh, thought I'd pause the video, but apparently I got too excited about pizza and did not. So you might have had to listen to about 10 minutes of uh, Janie and I talking and Tanner coming in having some pizza and stuff like that. Welcome to our family. Um, if I was able to edit it out, then you just have no clue what I'm talking about right now, but I won't know that until this video's over and I wasn't about to start the video over. So... I completed sewing the wallet. I went all the way around the second half of it up to my starting point again and then did my back stitch to complete my stitch. Then I took it over to the sander and I just sanded the, the edges down real lightly just to make sure they were all nice and even so that I could uh, I could do the uh, edge beveling on it. Okay, so now we're gonna edge bevel and um, actually first, I'm sorry, we need to cut those corners down on the lining pieces here just to have them match the other corners. Now this wallet is a little bit thick as is. Um, this leather is a little bit thick. Um, sometimes I'll take it over to my bell skyver and skive all my edges down and everything to make a, uh, a thinner side on the wallet. Um, I didn't do it here uh, because I want to show you that like making the wallet as is right here um, it's still just fine. It's still a great wallet. It's still a very finely made wallet. Um, it just, you know, like I said, if you, you know, if you have the right equipment or tools or if you're good at, a, you know, hand skiving and you want to do it that way, then you can skive down all these edges before you sew them together and make the edges of the wallet a little bit thinner. 
Um, not really a necessity. It does it does help with your the look of your finished product. So anyway. All right, now this is the hardest part to edge bevel right here along the back side. Excuse me, I guess technically I could have done it before I finished sewing the wallet together. Um, never once have I had the foresight to actually do it. Um, but every time I finish one, I'm like, man, I should have done that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. There we go. Now, just like how we did the, uh, the other parts, I'm going to dye those, uh, all these edges, and I'm going to burnish them. And that's that. We, uh, we now will have a completed wallet. I'm not going to do it on the camera because I need to get this video uploading to YouTube right now so that I don't have to be in the shop all night with my family. But I wanted to get this out today because it was promised out today. So, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy getting to make a wallet like this. Um... I hope that this, this video was very beneficial to you, and um, I hope you continue to be a supporter of Maker's Letter Supply. Thank you very much.